Gotcha. That's all good. Oh. To good morning, church. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I was a bit concerned. No voices, we can't sing. So why don't we stand this morning? We're going to see a victory in this place. We're going to see a victory. Hallelujah. What the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail No, my God will never fail I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see your victory to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for you. You take the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. I'm gonna see you. 
Father, we thank you in this place this morning for your love and grace, the power of your spirit to move in our hearts and lives, God. We give you all the thanks and praise. We worship your holy name. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you can take a quick seat. Welcome to church. Ah, oh, we will see a victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Not in our name, but for his glory. Amen. All right, what have we got? Prayer group this Wednesday, 6.30 till 8 at 17 Walpole Loop. All is welcome. Uh, even if you just want to come nap for an hour, you can do that and just be like, I'm praying. I've done that before. <laughs> what have we got? Living Crazy Love. So this starts on the 21st of July. It'll be a nine-week course on just growing our relationship with God. It is awesome. It's awesome. I've done it. It's awesome. Um, so come talk to me about it if you want more information. Uh, but I'll be starting on the 21st of July. Meet the pastor night. So this will be Saturday, July 24th, so two weeks, 5 p.m. here in the back hall. Um, we'll have heaters going. It's actually insulated, so it'll actually be kind of warm in the back hall. But if you want to know where, who we are, uh, what we stand for, where we're going, what the vision is for the church, for the region, uh, what God's put on our heart as a congregation, come along find out. It's a really good night. We'll have meatballs and pasta as well, just because it goes with the theme. Um, so warm food, heaters, come ask me some questions. Everyone is welcome to come. That's it. Awesome. So we will, I'll just pray over the tithes and offerings and we'll take those up. So Lord, we just thank you for the financial blessings that you do give us, Father. Uh, we just pray blessings over this little bit that we give back to you, Lord. Uh, you are our provider. You are our everything, not just in finances, but in our entire life. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take those up. Awesome, isn't it? Like we give a little bit back. But Jesus gave all of him for us. Like just that little thought is amazing that God looked down while we were sinners and sent his only son to die for us so we can live in freedom today. Amen? Amen. So we're going to take communion. Let's hand it out. And I really just want us to reflect that God's eternal plan was to send his son to die for us. Like, it wasn't something that he came up with at the time. He knew because he is outside time, right? He knew that we weren't good enough. He knew we couldn't measure up. So if you'd like to come up and grab some communion, grab the emblems, and then we'll, we'll take that together as a body, as a body. Aren't the kids doing an amazing job? Amen. Praise God. Praise God.
So let's take communion as a body that's been set free and bound together by the blood of Jesus. And let's remember the body that was broken for our sins. Amen. Whatever you've got, whatever you bring, whatever you have, regrets or whatever's happened, Jesus' blood covers you. He covers you. Amen? darkness my God that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are here touching every heart I worship you I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. And you are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. 
never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you ne even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Father, we give you all the praise in this place. You never stop working, Lord. You are glorious, God. Wonderful Savior, we give you all the praise. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, you are, waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Then all 
the third at break of dawn the son of heaven rose again oh trample death where is your sting the angels roll for Christ the King oh praise the for the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you said that if you go, you send a comforter, you will send the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the transformation in the early church, and we thank you for the transformation in our own lives. Here in this place, accessible to us through the veil, torn in two through the blood of Jesus Christ. Access to the Holy of Holies, the very presence of God, the Holy Spirit working in us.
set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. invite your spirit in here today, Father. We ask you to convict us, Lord. We ask you to challenge us. We ask you to encourage us, Father. We ask you to prepare our hearts for the word, Lord. We know that your word is like a double-edged sword, Lord. It'll split bone from marrow, Lord. Help us to receive it today, Father. We just worship you, Lord. We put your name above every other name. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the God of Gods, Father. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a seat. Welcome. Oh, God is good, isn't he?
God is good. God is good. Oh, praise his name. Praise his name. On you, Graham, for being obedient to, to, to the calling. Today's uh, sermon is called the, the Servant of Calling. So, well done, Graham. Awesome work, brother. Awesome work. Didn't he do well? Didn't God do well through him? Yeah, that's all right. Amen? Yes. Is that a fire? Come on. Let's hear it. We've got, we've got Jesus. We've got the Spirit. We've got freedom. Hey, there's something to get excited about. I'll get excited enough for all of you. <laughs> we are in a servant song series, four weeks of Isaiah. Four weeks of Isaiah. We're in the second week. As you remember, last week we started that. So as we recap last week, Isaiah was written over 500 years before the birth of Christ. And we're going to, over some of the, the prophecies that were said through Isaiah. Last week we went through the first servant song. We looked at God's mercy and judgment and who Jesus came for, the broken reeds. Has everyone still got their candle? You're meant to bring it today? No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so we're in a series of God's saving grace, his eternal purpose of redemption that he works through history. As we walk through this series, my hope is that we gain a deeper understanding of who Jesus was, who Jesus is, because he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. And how what that means for our lives. Like we want real transformation in this church. Amen. We want to be convicted. We want change. It's not just a pretty message that we come in here, but we want to radiate through our region, through our lives, through our loved ones, through our marriages. Amen? Amen? All right, so each week I said we'll study the scripture. We'll go in depth verse by verse. We'll do a little bit of application, how that applies to our life. And then we'll see what, we'll see what the Spirit does in between. Amen? So we are in Isaiah 49. We'll go 1 to 7. Sounds good? Are you willing to come on the journey? It says, listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention to you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The word is amazing. I love it. So the first two verses, I think, is enough to argue the entire deity of Christ, right? We're going to get through some scripture today. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, so I, I implore you to open your heart, right? It's, it's screaming that he is the Messiah. It's screaming he is the Messiah. So who is he speaking to in verse 1, right? Listen to me. Isaiah says, listen to me. No other prophet in the entire Old Testament says it in this way, right? It's not Isaiah saying, listen to me, is it? It's God saying, listen to me, right? It's God saying, listen to me. And this is so, I think this is so, so amazing, right? That this scripture was written in the Old Testament for who? For the Jews, for the Israelites, right? For God's people, yeah? And it says, listen to me, O coastlands. He's talking about us. He's talking about the Gentiles, right? He's talking about the one Jesus is coming to save, right? He's talking about the Gentiles, yeah? All nations. This is to be read after the resurrection, right? Because this is a time when Gentiles were not God's people. Amen, right? And yet it's written to prophesy, written to reach back through time and prove the Messiah. I just think that's amazing. God is outside time. He doesn't work in a linear time frame, does he? You know? But we've got Isaiah prophesying, God saying in the Old Testament, 500 years, 700 years before Christ was born, listen to me, O coastlands, listen to me, you Gentiles. Listen to me. I just think that's amazing. I just think that's amazing, right? It says, the Lord called me from the womb. Yeah, called me from the womb. We know that Jesus was put in the womb of Mary, yeah, by the grace of God. And the Bible can back itself up. You don't actually need, the Bi challenge the Bible, the word can back itself up. The word can back itself up. It's not contradictory. Right? We spoke about that a few weeks ago. Yeah? Challenge it. God can handle it. God can handle it. Right? If you're seeking truth, God can handle it. Isaiah 7:14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. In Proverbs it says. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? 
Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Amen. It says in verse 1, it says, He made my mouth like a sharp sword. And we know from Hebrews what he's talking about, don't we? It says, I just love it. I'm just going to keep reading the Bible if that's cool. All day. Sound good? I don't even need to preach. The Bible can preach itself. My job's easy. For the word of God is living and active. Amen. Come on, get hold of this truth, guys. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give accounts. It's all about Jesus. Isaiah is all about Jesus. All right? It says that he is a polished arrow. He strikes true. Right? Because most arrows are not all metal because of the weight. Right? But he is a polished arrow. He is all metal. He strikes true. He strikes to the heart. He gets straight to the heart of it. You can't, you can't like mess around with him. <laughs> Can you? You know? He sees the heart. It doesn't matter what you do on the outside, what you do in this world, or what you get accolades for. He sees straight in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It says, it says that he's hidden. So in verse 1, he's hidden. Of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. God has taken the Messiah's servant. And we talked about last week how the first coming of Jesus was like his meek coming. It's not going to be his second coming. The first coming was the servant Messiah. God the Father, God the Son, saying that, you know, his form is hidden away. Jesus has always been, but he hasn't always been revealed. But he's always been. God the Son has always been. It's not like God the Son came, God the Son, when he came down to earth as a human, right? Like, it says he was hidden away. In Galatians, did I get it right? No. No. I don't think I have it up there. Do I? Galatians? There we go. Gosh, I'm good. No, I'm kidding. God's good. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Isn't it amazing that you've been adopted into his kingdom? Like, not everyone is born. You've been adopted into the kingdom. He has seen you in the darkness. He has grabbed you. He's plucked you out and he's put you in the light. Let's not lose sight of that. Let's not lose, let's not forget that, what we've been given, the gift that's been given. Isaiah 3 to 4 says, hang on. Sorry, I've got no projector, man, so you don't have to deal with it. And he said to me, you are my servant. A lot of translators will say, you are my servant, Israel. And we think that he's talking about Israel. I don't think so. There's, there's like, you know, there's arguments for and to, but servant, I am 99% sure that he is talking about the Messiah. You are my servant, comma, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. God the Father saying to God the Son, you are my servant. You are here to serve me. I have called you, I've chosen you, God the Son, to go and bore the sins of many for our freedom, our forgiveness. 700 years before it happened. <laughs> the word is good. But I said, I have laboured in vain. This is God, this is not Isaiah, right? I have laboured in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord. So Jesus is saying, he knows he's going to come up against opposition. Jesus knows. He's like, I'm, I'm going to labour in vain. You have brought them out of Egypt and they still turn against you. you know? I have, I have, God is like, I've given my people everything and yet you turn to worship, to worship Baals, to idolatry. And don't we do that in today's world? It's like, I've given you my son. There's freedom and there's forgiveness for everything that you've ever done. And yet we still find ourselves turning away for comfort of this world. 
for the safe things of this world. He says, yet surely my right is with the Lord. Surely I'm with the Lord. God the Son's like, surely I'm with the Father though. I'm going to go and die for them, but I'm with the Father. And sometimes when you feel like you have a calling from God, when you have been chosen, right, you need to faithfully walk in that call. And do not stray, for your reward is not in this world, it is in heaven. Amen? You will not get rewarded in this world. It says that you'll be hated and you'll suffer, but you're doing it unto the Lord, unto God. Right? And don't forget, he said there will be blessings. There will be blessings, but we don't do it for that. Right? We don't do it for that. And my recompass with my God. Oh, so good. The saddest verse, I think, the saddest verse in the Bible is John 1, 10 to 11. Right? Yes. And it says, he was in the world. Jesus was in the world. And the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own. He came to his own people. And his own people did not receive him. Come on. I'm let that mellow for a second. Gosh, that must break God's heart. The Creator come down as God the Son to die for our sins. And we said, mm, we don't want it. But can you take over Israel? Can you make our world better? I'll tell you what, you make our world better and I'll follow you. Isn't that what they did? <laughs> Isn't that what we do? God, take care of these couple of bills, I'll follow you. If my God is real, my finances will improve. It doesn't work like that. I don't think it works like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God, has, God is a good God and has good plans for your life. But make no mistake, his will will be done. My question is, do you want it to be done through you? Let's finish off Isaiah. Now the Lord says, he who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, the Messiah, for I am honoured in the eyes of the Lord, for my God has become my strength. This is all God the Son talking to God the Father. It's not Messiah talking. This is dialogue between God the Father and God the Son. Isn't that beautiful? He says, It is to light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you a light for the nations. Haven't we read that through the New Testament? I will make you a light for the nations, for the nations, for the Gentiles. If you were an Israelite reading the Old Testament in the time, you'd be like, what are you talking about? That my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. That's what God would like. His, 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 he would see no one perish. He would see no one perish. Amen? Thus the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, who one deeply despised, uh, abhorred by the nations, the servant of rulers. I love this bit. Kings shall see and arise. Princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, has, who has chosen you. Oh, isn't that a great verse where I can just be like, who has chosen you? Fluff it up. But God's talking to the Messiah here. He's talking to Jesus. <laughs> God the Father has chosen God the Son to come down and bore your sin. That's what it's saying here. We have to read the Scriptures in context. Give the Scriptures the integrity they deserve. Amen? Amen? But it does have a dual meaning because you are chosen and you are called. Right? Philippians, it says, is this, is this not too much scripture? Are we, are we all good? Are we good? All right, good. Because I'm going to have it up there anyway. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. 
being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. It says even death on a cross because it was the worst way to die. Not everyone got crucified for their wrongdoings. It was the worst way to die. There was even a law where the Romans were not allowed to crucify a Roman because it was too terrible. Jesus was called by God the Father. And, God, and this verse tells us that God the Son chose to become flesh for us. Amen? Isn't that great love? Isn't that great love? He looked down, he saw his creation. He said, I will go there and I will bore their sins and I will die on the cross for them. He knew what was coming. He's outside time. He is God. He is God, right? Jesus did something different. It was different. It was different to the world. It was different to the world. So I want to talk about our calling. I spoke about this a few weeks ago, right? I think we have three calls. Your eternal call to Christ, that's eternal. You have a call to Christ, right? You have a temporary call to an assignment, right? God might call you to mission. God might call you to a place. God might call you to go do something, right? And you have a call to be different than the world. Not to meld with the world, but to be different from the world, right? And last time I said you're called to a who before you're called to a do. Amen? Right? We are called to be someone before we're called to go do something, right? We are called to a different standard in character. We are called to a different moral standard than the world, right? You are chosen. You are called. In 1 Peter, it says, Beloved, I urge you as soldiers and exiles to abstain, to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Oh, come on. So much truth. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honourable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. This is clear instruction to live differently, isn't it? Isn't it? You know? When we live differently, when we are different from the world, you will be seen different from the world. If you act like the world acts, they'll be like, there's nothing different about them. Why would I even bother? Then when you try and defend the gospel, they're like, you're the same as me, man. You just believe in Jesus. What's the difference? You can defend the gospel by the way you live every single day, by what you do every single day, right? Get that right first before you have this big calling about defending the gospel, right? And you should defend the gospel. I'm not saying not to, but get what you're doing every day right. I want to urge someone to live boldly. Like we sang that song, set a fire that I can't contain. Whenever you have a thought that you feel like God has called you to do something, I promise that the enemy will scream at you to tell you not to. Do you ever get those things like, oh, I feel like doing this for someone. Oh, don't do that, you're an idiot. You hardly know them, rah, 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 rah. That's the enemy screaming at you because you're about to do something for God, Right? And you say, I am covered by the blood of Jesus and I am going to follow the whisper of God because God is near. And you shut out the screams of the enemy. Amen? Amen? Do it. Step out of your comfort zone and do it. Live differently. Live differently. Live boldly. Live so someone looks at you and goes, what is different about that person? Why are they so kind? It's ridiculous, right? Your best defense is what? I'll always try and work a sports analogy in, right? Your best defense is what? A good offense. Stop shutting the hatches and trying to defend against the enemy. Because you have the light and you have the keys to the kingdom to say that I am going to take ground because you have Jesus Christ. The enemy will make you feel like you're alone and you can't do that. Right? Where the lightness is, darkness will flee. Darkness will flee. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. Isn't that tough? If someone reviles me, I want to revile in return. <laughs> My flesh goes, come on, get him. You know? 
to do. He said, no, don't do that. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. But we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. It goes, I'm going to keep repeating myself until it sinks in. Because it goes against everything the world tells you. Doesn't it? It's not normal by the world's standards. But it's normal by the word's standard. The word, not the world. Maybe some of us got confused because we're like, live by the word, live by the word. And we just hear live by the world because it's so similar. The word, right? Live by the word. This is truth. This is truth. The word is truth. Amen, right? It's sad when we actively create narrative to support difficult scriptures to make them easier to live by, right? So we can fit in the world. Did you know we're not meant to fit in the world? You have been set apart. You have been set apart. You have been made anew. You have been created holy from the world. We are in this world, but not of this world. Right? Paul said, don't be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's an active warning against it. It's an active warning against it. And it's getting harder and harder and harder, isn't it? To have one foot in the world and one foot in the word. You know? I reckon gymnasts could do it, but any more than this, I'm done for. Right? And something's going to break. The Bible is super clear about persecution and suffering that we are going to face. But Peter tells us to hold fast to our salvation, right? That we have been given and what's coming and the glory in heaven when we face adversity. That's what we hold to. That's what we hold to, right? The, you know what? The problem isn't whether people want the Bible, biblical truth or God. That's not the problem. The problem is whether people want truth or not. When we talk to people about the gospel, you know, a really good question to ask is, do you want the truth? Because the truth is always going to lead back to God. The truth is always going to lead back to the word, right? If you want the truth, if your heart of hearts wants the truth, if your hearts of hearts believe that we have a good God, if your hearts of hearts believe that we have a good God with good plans for your life, right? Right? There's no difficult scripture. There's just difficult application. Amen? I should be able to open any part of the Bible and read it, and we should love it, and we should enjoy it, because it's all good. It's all good, because our God is good. Amen? It might be difficult to follow. That's why we fall short. That's why we needed Jesus Christ. That's why he came, and he died for us on the cross, and his blood now covers us and covers our sins. Right? Because we fall short. But let's love the word of God. Because it's all good. It's all good and it's all truth. It's all truth. Right? I was seeking truth. When I was saved, I was seeking truth. Not God. I was actively against God. I was actively against the Bible. But I wanted truth. And God found me. Right? It's a beautiful love story. It's a beautiful love story. I rejected God time and time and time again, but God never rejected me. That's the truth. That's the truth. Amen? Our eyes are open to the truth as believers, right? And we will defend the truth. I will give my life to defend the truth because I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going, right? I'll defend the truth of my life and I will live the calling to protect this flock and to preach the word of God because it's what I've been told to do and I'm going to do it faithfully because that's the truth and we need truth in our lives. When we face persecution, when you face the tough times, the only thing that's going to get you through is the peace of God. The storms are going to come whether you believe the truth or not, right? But with the peace of God, you'll get through them. Amen? We have a daily call to live a different life. Are we good? We don't repay evil with evil. What do we do? We pay it back with a blessing. 
How difficult is that? What did God do? How did he repay our guilt? He smited us down. Maybe in the Old Testament, Sodom and Gomorrah. But this time he sent Jesus Christ. He gave us a chance to come to him. It won't be like this the next time. Will it? Jesus will come with a robe dipped in blood. And every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord. That he is Lord. And for us, that's going to be a glorious day. That's going to be an awesome day. We want that day. It says in the word that we want that day to come. Right? But right now, you are on call. No, Brendan, not at the hospital. <laughs> He's actually on call, sorry. <laughs> we are on call to love someone that is in need, to feed someone that is hungry, right? To say, hey, man, I think you need some help. Are you okay? Are you doing all right? There's needs in this church. There's needs in this congregation. Do we think about that? Do we say, oh, who, who could use lunch today? Who haven't I spoken to in a few weeks? Who are we? We are lovers of the truth. That's what we're doing in this church. Come to meet the pastor tonight. You'll hear all about this stuff. We are lovers of the truth. We are faith-filled, spirit-led, truth-seeking warriors of God. That's the only way to describe it. That is who we are. That is who we are. We will love irrationally. We will give generously. And we will not insult God with small thinking. We won't do it. We'll see how many come back next week. <laughs> That's what we're going to do as a church. That's what God's put on our heart, right? And we're going to have faith that he is building our church. Amen? It says in 1 Peter 2, 1, for this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. Follow. You have been called to do good. You have been called to follow Jesus. What does it mean, I'll finish with this, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Where is he going? Don't you ever think that? Where is he going? I'm following him. Where are you going? Right? I want to go through two quick parables. We'll explain those and then we'll finish up. Is that cool? We've got enough time? Nothing in your schedule? Good. <laughs> Luke 15, 4. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, we all know this one, don't we? If he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. He must be fit, I reckon. He's a fit shepherd. He's strong. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Straight away, another parable. All that a woman... Having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbours, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Over one sinner. Let's talk about the analogy of the scripture, shall we? There is something in the wrong place, right, in these stories. There is God in these stories, and there is something in the right place. In the first parable, what do you think is in the wrong place? So we've got God the shepherd, we've got one sheep in the wrong place. Amen? What is in the right place? 99 sheep are in the right place, yeah? Yeah? We'll see if we can get the second one. What's in the wrong place in the second parable? One coin. There is God the lady. Don't, don't go there. Right? The right place, there is nine coins. Okay? The shepherd, right? The shepherd is going where? To the one sheep. That is where the shepherd is going. Amen? The lady is going to one coin. So you've got the shepherd and the lady, you've got God the Father going after the one. Amen? Going after the one. He is going for the one that needs saving. And then he looks back, right? And he looks at the 99, which is us, the saved, 
right? He looks at the 99 and he says, follow me to the one. Amen? And what are we doing? We are the 99 and we're going, actually, uh, I'm busy, busy. Actually, I need to pay my bill. Can you make my life a little bit more comfortable? Jesus is saying, follow me. I'm going. Follow me. I'm going after the one. I'm going after the one. How? By living differently. Follow him by living differently. We don't have to go to Africa to save people. Hallelujah, because you can't go there anyway at the moment. You're not called to a big mission over there. Maybe you are, and if you are, be faithful to it and go. But you don't need to go there to be on mission. You're a missionary here. There's a region here. You have been given people here to live differently. I'm not, going, I'm not saying to go out there and evangelise the streets. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to use your gifts to live differently and to follow Jesus and go after the one. I don't think God said, everyone go after the one except the shy people. You're exempt because you're shy and you can't talk about the gospel, right? But you can cook a meal. You've been placed in a workplace. You've been placed somewhere, right, to live differently, to be different. If you concentrate on your character, if you concentrate on being transformed into the likeness of Christ, that will be enough to show the goodness of God. Amen? Amen? The light shines bright in a dark world. And the world's only getting darker, but the light shines bright in a dark world. Be different and minister where you are. Amen? One story to finish. Promise, promise. One story, right? Everyone knows this picture, I'm sure. Everyone knows this picture. The Titanic, right? Tragedy, absolute tragedy, right? The unsinkable ship. And, and you probably know that when, every, when the ship was going down, and they ended up going down really late, because everyone's still partying as the ship's like sinking, right? Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but that's what happened. Um, everyone rushes to the boats, and the boats could carry like 72 people. And there's some boats that went down with as little as 12 and rowed away. These boats in the water are not going back for the people in the water. They're rowing away. They're rowing away from the people that need saving. Where are we? Are we rowing away from the people that need saving? You know, I've heard the analogy a lot. 100 people go overboard, you save two. Do you warm up the two, right? Do we make a more biblical church? Do we warm up the two or do we go back after the 97? Why can't we all go back after the 97? Why can't we all live differently and go back? Amen? What you might not know is this man here. This man here, his name is John Harper. He got on the boat to go preach at a church in Chicago. Right? That is his daughter. That's his six-year-old daughter. I have a six-year-old daughter. My gosh, if you have a kid, just look at your kid, right? Six-year-old daughter. The Titanic's going down. He grabs his daughter. He wraps his, her in his arms. He goes to a lifeboat. He puts her on the lifeboat and says, I love you. I'll see you later. He leaves her and he goes up the deck running, banging on the doors, saying, women, children and the unsaved get to the lifeboats. Because he knew where he was going. He's just going to get there a little bit sooner. Women, children and the unsaved get to the lifeboats and he's knocking and he's running and he's screaming. He's praying with people. There is a guy that was hanging overboard, he takes off his life jacket, places it on this guy and pretty much just commits that he's going to die that night. He can't get to a lifeboat, he has no life jacket and the ship is going down. He finds himself in the water, right? Finds himself in the water. Swimming on this, like, I don't know, piece of wood 
obviously, right? And he's yelling out at the top of his lungs, call to Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Call on Jesus Christ and you will be saved. To all the men and women dying, dying around him. The current brings him close to a guy called Michael. Right? And he says, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And the guy, Michael, goes, no. And he said, call on the name Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Give your life to Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The current takes them back apart. Right? This guy, Michael, is like, what did I just hear? What's going on? I do not get it. Pulls them back together. And he said, have you called on the name Jesus Christ? And he said, no. He said, call on the name Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The guy gives his life to Jesus Christ in the water. Right there. John Harper dies. A boat comes back. The one boat comes back and saves four people from the water. This guy who gives his life to Christ was one of those four people. And we know the story because he told it at the, at the one-year reunion of the Titanic survivors a year later. He was his last convert. The last person John Harper saved. And he lived to tell the tale. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? That is something different. John Harper lived differently. He knew where he was going. He knew his promise in eternity. I don't know how many people were saved that night, but praise God for putting him on that boat because he he knew that that was his mission. And when he gave his daughter over, he knew she was going to be orphaned for the rest of her life until she was 18. We're called to live differently. It's the way that you live is how you silence the talk from people that don't know better. People don't know better. People in the world don't know better. But the way you live will show them that there is better. If they have not felt the love of Christ, how can they act like Christ? But we do. We have felt the love of Christ. We can act like Christ. People may persecute and we will not persecute back. We will love irrationally, we will give generously and we will be spiritual contributors and not spiritual consumers because the world needs that. Amen? We will live differently to the world. I'll finish with the scripture. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving not throwing punches, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, as you also must forgive. And above all, these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, pick up the vacuum, in whatever you do, talk to your neighbour, in whatever you do, have lunch with someone, in whatever you do, in word or do, deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus. If you don't have a lot of faith, if the only prayers that you say are in the morning and before dinner, (laughs) because he's in your life the whole day, right? Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Giving thanks to God the Father. What does Jesus say? Your will, not mine. There's a guy that died of a brain tumour. I thought it was amazing on his deathbed. He said, Lord, heal me. And if you don't, I'll love you as well. And if you don't, I'll still love you. Come on, church, let's do it differently. That's why I'm so passionate about becoming a body because I know the power behind it. So passionate about the truth because that's what we've been called to do, to live in truth. Amen? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to blow the roof off with some worship. Lord, we just thank you for your message, Father. We thank you that we are called, Lord.
We thank you for your truth. May we not sway from it, Lord. May we turn to it in need, Lord. We thank you that you sent your only son, Lord, to die for our sins, Lord. Just help us, Lord. Help us. Help us to live a life that you want us to live, Lord. Help us to live a life that is led by your Spirit. Help us to turn to you in everything that we do, Lord. Help us just to understand your great love for us, Lord, and that your blood covers us. That we are forgiven. That we are free. That we are called. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's, let's stand, let's worship. If you, This guy, Jesus, came down in the flesh. In the flesh. And he was beaten and bruised by the people he came for. And he was put on the cross to die for our sins. His blood poured out, covers your sins, right? He was put in a tomb. Three days later, the stone was rolled away. And he was risen. And that resurrection power operates in your lives. If you don't know Jesus, all you need to do is confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart and you will be saved. Amen? If you need prayer, come up the front, get some prayer. Say, I will give it over. I am called and I will step into that calling. Let's stand. Wait, me. 
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Awesome. Go out this week. Be the light. Be the light. Live differently. Amen. Emma's made chicken rolls as well. So if anyone's hungry, <laughs> there are chicken and gravy rolls at the back. So be blessed. Have a great week.